what their product is because maybe they fear, um, you know, someone's going to steal my idea or whatever that may be. But the more you know who your customer is, uh, the better product you're going to be able to build because you're going to know what their what their needs are. So here is kind of a, a very uh, sensitive division between exciting and emotions and dreams and reality, correct? Correct. So because if I want to put something together, design something, I think that that's going to be the best invention in the history of yeah. mankind, correct? Right. But that's a dream. That's probably, maybe it's right, but most probably it's not. So you are advising that that guy, woman or man, should go out and share his, her ideas with more people, with the market, and see if it's really feasible, realistic, or it's just yes, a dream. Yes, because a startup is very difficult, <laughs> you know, to get to the next level. And if you're going to follow this path of entrepreneurship, you're going to make a lot of sacrifices. So it's, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy it's road. It's not an easy road at all. No. It's kind of a crazy It's road. a crazy road because it's full of uncertainty. And a lot of people are, um, not comfortable with uncertainty. Right. That's why in Spanish we say, todo bien sin novedad. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> everything, everything is good, the same. Because uh, we are always afraid to change or to the uncertain future. And right. to be an entrepreneur, you really need to challenge that feeling. Exactly. The comfort, the comfort zone is very rare for an entrepreneur, isn't it? Exactly. So now... You kind of preaching the lean startup philosophy, like, you know, the, the concept is good, but it's, if you don't take it to the market and ask people about it, if they yeah. like it or they need it, right. probably you are wasting your time, kind of. Exactly. Especially in manufacturing, because once you start investing in um, tooling in your supply chain, it gets very, very expensive. So you can easily build the wrong thing and the market will reject it and then you're out of business. So in these terms, what is most important for you, rationality or passion or both? Um, both, definitely. Yeah. You, you know, if you don't have a passion and a vision for what you want to accomplish, um, then you're going to run across a lot of challenges because these, you know, founders have to be able to recruit more people to their team, right? Like you have to, you can't, you can't be a billion dollar company with just one person. Impossible. Yeah. So in this case, what is failure for you? Failure. Mm-hmm. What is it for you, the conception? Because um, the question goes to many people that think about an idea and the market doesn't respond to it. That's a failure in a way. So what is for you failure? How do you overcome failure? How do I? Um, I think there's, I mean, there's small failures, um, mistakes that you can rebound from and you can still keep going. Uh, so the, the important thing is to be able to, to learn from those mistakes, um, and make corrections. Um, but not waiting, waiting too long to make those corrections. So we meet with our entrepreneurs in the program every day, Tuesday through Thursday, and we ask them what their biggest challenges are. They're going to have small fail failures, and that's okay, as long as, as long as we can get them back on the track. Now, we generally think that to put together a prototype is something more manly, is for men. 
Do you see women also getting into this uh, kind of a concept and launching prototypes and being involved in, yeah. in this kind I, of uh, uh, we've We, our venture fund, Mila, has made um, 19 investments to date. 50% of the companies we've invested in have a female founder on the team. 50%. Um, the, one of the last investments that I, that we made was in a female entrepreneur. She's, um, uh, from Guatemala. She's a civil engineer and she created a battery storage system that uses renewable energy. Interesting. So yes. So, How is that working? And, is it good? and uh, yeah, so this is not not uh, exclusive to just you know males for hardware. My business partner Nora May Cadena is a mechanical systems engineer. Interesting. Now, uh, what is better to launch a huge uh, item or small item? What is more marketable? Small meaning even in size, mm -hmm. you know, or a huge tower or something like that. What's your perception about it? Um, I mean, it depends on how big the opportunity is. So one of our companies is a, a rocket ship. So that's, that's very big <laughs> uh, and very capital intensive, but it's a, also a big market opportunity. If they, you know, when they get to, to market. So when you say one of our companies, what, yeah. what, that, what do you mean by that? Why don't you tell me more about Mila? Yeah, we're a venture fund and we invest in hardware technology companies. Um, a, a majority of our investments are companies that have gone through our accelerator program. But then we also make investments into companies that are beyond the accelerator. Perhaps they're already in market with a product. Um, we especially like um, startups that are working in food and food and ag tech, um, mobility and aerospace, biotech and medical devices, clean tech and energy, immersive tech. And companies that are have the ability to go global. So, what was the most interesting area for you personally of those that you just mentioned? For me personally, I am passionate about uh, the environment. So, I really like um, energy. Um, energy tech, uh, and that includes batteries. Um, I like uh, clean tech as well, renewable energy. Um, but I also am really excited about food, food tech and um, agriculture tech. So by food tech, I mean uh, food security and food safety. So a lot of people talk about cybersecurity and the threats to the internet. But what about threats to our food system? You know, there's, there's a lot of pathogens that can come through the supply chain. And uh, from your perspective, what's the market most uh, waiting for? What's it ready for? What's really expecting? What's a hot product or area <laughs> in this case? Uh, well, that's why we've selected uh, six themes for our, our second venture capital fund. Um, Especially in L.A., you know, when people think of L.A., I, I, I was born and raised in San Diego. And whenever I tell someone I was born and raised in San Diego, I get a positive reaction, right? Oh, my God, I love San Diego. We do. We Everyone, do. you know, La Jolla, I, we, I hear it all the time. When I tell people I live in L.A., it's a very negative reaction. It's, oh, the traffic. Right, right. So for me, that means opportunity in the mobility space. Uh, L.A. is a hot pocket for uh, electric vehicles, for mobility. Um, in L.A., L.A. is one of the test regions for Uber Elevate. And so by 2023, we should have um, 
eVTOLs, which are vertical and takeoff and landing vehicles. So just imagine the Jetsons, right? So we'll have sky pods. We'll take an elevator up to a sky pod and then we'll take a flying vehicle to the next sky pod. And, you know, so, so that's what our future in LA looks like. There's a lot of opportunity here. That's scary though. Why? You might, you might be, <laughs> uh, do you want to sit in traffic for two hours or do you want to? <laughs> imagine an accident up there. You know, you, you, I mean, it's, you have a collision with another car flying. And oh, my God. You're I'm more scared of the person that's texting in their car. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's go back to the entrepreneur. So I have a concept. I call you guys i how do i go from there you sign up for our newsletter and then um you come to one of our events mila.com correct uh, m i m i l a yeah mila 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 vc or makinla.com as well um so you can sign up for our newsletters and then we'll post announcements on when our next application cycle is if you want to speak with us we do office hours and you can sign up for a 30 minute slot and you can tell us what type of conversation you want to have um we can role play like say you want us to be a we had a call this morning we said what do you how what do you want us to be and he said we want you to be a tough investor so basically tear apart our our idea um Someone, some will say, we want you to be a mentor. We want, we just want you to coach us along. Give us advice. Interesting. Now, Carmen, how do you feel about, you know, deciding on, on the future, the life of all these entrepreneurs, people that, is, that are aspiring to be, f I mean, rich, famous, successful, or whatever. Yeah. But you are one of the people that say go or doesn't go, right. correct? Yes. How do you feel about it? I feel great. You know, one of our companies is addressing the mental health issues that we're facing in this country. So, you know, they have a... a a device, it's a wearable, and it helps cognitive behavioral therapists work with their, um, their patients and gives them the ability to help them get better. Those people suffering from mild anxiety and mild depression, for example, you know, when that company, um, you know, uh, is successful, that means that they will be helping a ton of people that that suffer from from this disorder. So that's great to me. That makes me feel really good. Of course. But what about yeah. when you have to decline a concept? Right. How, how yeah. do you feel about it? I mean, yeah. personally. Um, it's Yeah, it's tough because we're constrained by the amount of money we have in our venture capital fund, right? If I had a billion dollars to invest, I probably could say yes more often than no. <laughs> um, so yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good to tell an entrepreneur no, but on the other side, um, I get told no a lot too. You know, when I go out and raise my, raise a fund from so you investors, see that the other I know side what of it feels table. like. Yeah. 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 So you, you travel a lot asking for investors. <laughs> I, yeah. I travel a lot to meet with prospective investors that are interested in um, this asset class. Um, and yeah. How, how do you get to this position? What do you do in your life? I, when I, I graduated from USC with a, a degree in economics and I started working for an investment manager and that manager invested in companies that are on the public stock market. So I was there for over a decade and, um, I, I started to, um, get curious about all of the companies that we were investing in, in the portfolio. And I wanted to get closer to, to those companies. And then you got to this position. Then I, that company moved to Austin, Texas, and I, um, took a step back and had to make a decision. Do I want to move to Texas or do, do I want to do something different with my career? Um, I have always, um, been troubled by the 
income and wealth inequality in our Latino community. And 